in the previous video we discussed about the cleavage of zygote into morula if you want to watch that video the link is in the description now here we are going to discuss about the blastocyst formation which includes morula to blastocyst transition simply if we see what happens in the fallopian tube it starts with the ovulation then fertilization then zygote formation then this zygote is cleaved into morula that occurs 3 to 5 days post fertilization and this morula is 16 to 32 cell structure now this morula travels to uterine cavity where it is converted into blastocyst 6 to 7 days post fertilization then blastocyst hatches out from zona pellucida after that we see the implantation of blastocyst on endometrium the first part that occurs in fallopian tube has already been discussed now this is what we are going to discuss the morula to blastocyst part here we start with the morula stage first it's driven into compaction process the compaction is when the cells of morula tightly adhere to each other compaction is primarily driven by two key mechanisms e catherine activation and calcium dependent addition the outcomes of the compaction process are threefold apical basal polarity tight junction formation and actin rearrangement the apical basal polarity is established helping the outer cells orient themselves with a defined axis tight junction formation ensures a sealed environment within the embryo lastly we see the actin rearrangement which strengthens cell connections and contributes to the structural organization of the embryo now let's move on to the cavitation process the cavitation process involves two key mechanisms working together sodium potassium ATPase activation and tight junction sealing the sodium potassium ATPase activation actively pumps sodium ions across the cell membrane creating an ion gradient as a result of this gradient water follows the sodium ions into the forming cavity leading to water retention the tight junction between the outer cells ensures that the fluid drawn in by the ion gradient is retained within the embryo. This sealing prevents fluid leakage, ensuring the proper development of the cavity. Together, both these mechanisms facilitate fluid retention, leading to formation of central cavity called the blastocele. Now, from here, we move on to early blastocyst stage. At this stage, the embryo divides into two distinct cell lineages, ICM and trophectoderm. Inner cell mass, that is ICM, these cells give rise to embryo proper. They are characterized by expression of specific transcription factors such as NANOG, SOX2 and OCT4. Second is trophectoderm. These cells form the outer layer of blastocyst and will contribute to the placenta. Their development involves inactive to hippo pathway. This allows the transcription factor YAP, that's YAP, to enter the nucleus. Once in the nucleus, nuclear YAP activates T transcription factors, leading to expression of CDX2, which specifies trophectoderm identity. Thus, these molecular processes result in the separation of ICM and trophectoderm establishing the foundation of embryonic and extra embryonic structures and finally we get the expanded blastocyst formation where we see the mature trophectoderm primitive endoderm and epiblast precursors now this concludes the blastocyst phase after that we have the hatching process and implantation of blastocyst which will be discussed in the next video. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting me, work on Patreon or YouTube, and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.